Money, what's up? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Is this is this good framing? Is this yeah. us us Becca kids? I guess we know how to frame, right? Yeah, absolutely. You got to get the right the headroom. Um, the lighting is good. Yes, yeah, perfect. What are you? I like your hair. Every time, I, it's always like a, a, you know, what's Jackie Hollywood's hair gonna be like today? Pink, like has been, pink has been my favorite color that I've done so far out of all of them, but um, it's hard for me to stick with one color, so. I feel that. Pink is like, pink and blue are like the only two colors that I could really rock with. Pink and light blue, like this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah pastel, like baby blue. Exactly, well, yeah. Well, good to see you. Thanks for being on my show. <laughs> so, I'm at home. So obviously you're home right now, I assume. Um, what's in, are you in L.A.? I'm in, I'm actually in, um, I'm in Sonoma with my parents right now. Oh, you're in Sonoma. Okay. So you came back to Sonoma for quarantine to stay with them? Yeah. So I was in LA for a little bit. And then um, after like being quarantined for a month, I just said, you know what? I want to see my parents. I was, uh, me and my roommate were at each other's throats and I love him. And I could tell that this quarantine was about to ruin my relationship with one of my best friends just being... Cause I, I'm a guy who I need, I can't be around the same person for too much. It's why I'm single. It's why I can't make it work. With <laughs> I can't have somebody in my face like that. And it was driving me insane. I've never felt, I'm a non, I'm a nonviolent person. I've never felt the urge to punch somebody in the face. So <laughs> I was like, so I had to come up to Sonoma and um, it's been pretty rocky up here cause my parents are older. So I've had to be extra cautious right. and whatnot. But, I understand. You know. Well, speaking of um, you saying that one of the reasons that is that you're is that you're single is that you don't like being around the same person all the time. I definitely want to let the audience know um, who you are because we did not get started off with that. <laughs> um, so Imani, one of uh, my good friends from college, actually, and he's yeah. a rapper, fellow rapper. Um, yeah. That's one thing we have in common. But something really yeah. cool that, that you did was you were on season six of Are You the One on MTV. And yeah. Let's not forget that because that was like a big deal and that was a really fun show. It was it was crazy. It was literally the craziest experience of my life. Um, and uh, and it was fun. It was let me just tell you this. It was way more fun for people to watch than it was to actually be on the show. So everybody was entertained while I had the most miserable 30 days of my life. And I just, <laughs> I just laugh when people complain about this quarantine. Oh, because man. Are You The One was the quarantine of all quarantines, except there's cameras on your face all the time and you can't go to sleep without listening to five people have sex. It was, uh, it was, it was in, Jackie, it was, it was Wait, crazy. How many, how many days was that you said, 30? It was, oh, I think like in total, it was probably like 30 to 32 days because, yeah, I think like 32, 33 days. Basically, and so, like. And you don't get like, just like with all reality shows, I assume you don't get any kind of communication with home or like you don't get any phones, any internet, like no entertainment pretty much. Do you even get like any kind of music or anything that, or TV? You know what? No, no TV, no books. We can't write anything like no technology whatsoever. Literally what you quarantine. Like this is. Except this is probably way better because you're just hanging out with your parents and you can close your door and be alone versus over there you have like all these personalities around you who are, let's just be real, some are probably sweethearts and amazing and some are, you probably don't even want to be around. So that's totally good. <laughs> <better. laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's, I was actually thinking about this. People who get cast for reality shows are, they're either like, they're all type A people and they were all the class clown, the, you know, the, just the loudest out of their bunch of friends. Always the person that everybody's like, what's he gonna say next? And that's always like who I am in my group of people. It's like yeah. who you are. But then you take all those people and put them together. It was the weirdest thing to be like, damn, I'm not the funniest person. I'm not the loudest person. In fact, I was the most quiet out of everybody. You were, I was you were barely, most... like, barely on it because you were you were the quiet, like you were kind of the quiet, sweet one, the one who's funny but like too shy to like talk. To the, that's how they portrayed you. Too shy to talk to girls and whatever. And so everybody else yeah. would pull up in there, and you were kind of. I I would watch it obviously for you. That was the first thing uh -huh. I started watching because I wanted to see you on there, and I would always be like, "Where is he?" I like, "Oh, come on." I want to see more. It. I want to see some e money drama. <laughs> let me uh, let me let me tell you this. <laughs> it's it's not that they didn't put me on the show because it's not that they cut out a lot of e money scenes. I literally hid from the cameras after after the fifth day. I had this whole plan. I was like, 
I'm, I'm not going to be, I, I know that they're not going to show me on the show and it's going to be so embarrassing and humiliating. So what I'm going to do is as soon as it airs, I'm going to move to Spain and I'm going to be there for three years and I'm only going to come back to the States when uh, people forget that I was even on the show. Cause I was, cause while I was on the show, I was regretting it so hardcore. And I just felt like, I felt like I like was letting my friends down. Cause they were all like, Iman, he's on a show. He must be doing, he's probably going to be doing some crazy shit, but. Uh, I, I was just a sad, miserable. Honestly, like you're too stupid to do some of the crazy shit that other people do on those shows. Like you're just too good of a guy to like start drama just to start drama. Whereas some well, other ones may start it just for the cameras. But I don't see. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good point. I mean, like, and another thing is, I, I was way older. I was 26, and most people were like 21, 22. So. Scratch it. <laughs> So those kids, like, they didn't really know any better, and they were all just, like, it was all airtime, airtime, airtime. It was the whole show. It, it should have been called Are You the One Who's Going to Get the Most Airtime because it was just a constant battle. And, and, uh, and, and I just, I just kind of knew that, like, the way you get airtime is you have to treat women like shit as a man. That's what you like, have I to do. That that's not you as a person, so you're not going to put on that act. So I, I completely understand, like, why it was – a lot for you. Anyways, I do want to get into quarantine questions because that's what the show's all about. I, I wanted okay. to like, let people know who you were kind of thing, but let's okay. get down to the actual quarantine because we've been in this thing for a while now. It's been, extended, yeah. it's been extended at least in California for another month, right? So it's about yeah. three, like three months of quarantine, but the biggest question is have you run out of toilet paper yet? Oh no, that's such a funny question because I remember the very... <laughs> I got so paranoid because that's my biggest fear is running out of toilet paper. So my, the very first night that I heard that Ralph's in LA had no more toilet paper, I was like, me and my roommate were like coming up with ways of like, how are we going to call in favors? How are we going to get, how are we going to stack up our house with the most toilet paper possible? So what we did was we went to like five different grocery stores. Finally, we went to Gelson's, which is like the upscale place that like the poor people just can't afford. So we went to Gelson's and then we just bought as many, to as much, we bought like, you know, a good amount of toilet paper from Gelson's. I don't want to say we hoarded. And uh, then... That was, I was probably a hoarder, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, it's, not, it's not cool to hoard. Um, it, you really ruin it for everyone else. But but I think at the beginning, a lot of people were scared about that, and then they started to realize, like, later on. I, I actually was never fearful of that for some reason. I was like, I'll just use... I have a bidet at home, which is really fancy and European, but my parents are from there. So, you know, I could just... Right with water so I was like it's not a big deal and then I think once time went on people realized like all right there's there's gonna be toilet paper in the world like we're gonna be able to wipe our butts it's okay <laughs> exactly yeah and there's there's obviously enough for everybody but I don't know what I don't know what it was like we all had this mentality that like and it's funny that toilet paper was the first thing that uh right out of everything not like water or food or or something right important that's going to keep you alive it's literally something that's just like a sanitary it's not even a necessity kind of thing so it is pretty funny um, yeah I'm glad you didn't I, run out <laughs> that's good yeah what I did was the, the reason I didn't run out is it's a funny story there was this lady who was kind of my boss who I used to flirt with and we we would get along you know and I would always uh I would suck up to her. Let's just say that <laughs> you know it's, it's Hollywood baby you gotta suck up to the lady <laughs> and uh and, and I, w I was vocal on Facebook about the fact that I needed toilet paper. And she's like, oh, come over. I got you. So I went to her house. I'm not proud of the things that I did. And it's not appropriate to let you know what I did. But I got some toilet paper. So, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Desperate times. Interview over. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, have you picked up any new hobbies during this time that you didn't think that you'd ever do before or something that maybe you didn't even enjoy before and now you're kind of just doing it anyway? Yes, I picked up this new hobby. It's called hand washing. Um, finally starting to wash my hands, which is something that people said that they used to do. Um, another thing, another hobby is I learned how to masturbate five times a day and uh, not get tired. <laughs> Honestly, like that's that's not too far from the truth but as far as hobbies the main thing that i've like really been um honing in on is playing piano because i always loved playing piano but now um with all this free time i'm really like learning the scales and Good. i won't be um, you're obviously you're a musician so the more you the more instruments you know the better have you been writing more music while you're uh, yeah i mean i finished i was able to finish an entire album which like Wow. Everybody knows this as a musician. It's like, I'm working on an album. I'm working on an album. But as soon as quarantine hit, I was like, 
it's like amazing how much you could accomplish when you're you kind of recording it or just writing like do you have a recording studio yeah i record i record like in my bedroom so i just record produce do everything in my bedroom so it's pretty easy for me um, so sad that you that you're able to record yourself and so you can get things done versus i'm doing a lot of writing but i'm not mm -hmm. actually recording anything i'm just writing it for later <laughs> right 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 oh, yeah no um, what's, the, what's the first thing that you like can't wait to do when this is over like the minute that they, that they say everything is open like everything's open what what do you want to do um is this a g-rated but like I don't, I don't know how uh because my, okay have sexual have sexual intercourse with a woman that's not a joke and that's not trying to be funny okay, with a human but, woman a human woman yes <laughs> clarifying because there's you know robots and blow-up dolls and things like that so <laughs> oh that's a good now you're getting my brain that i probably should order a, a blow-up doll but like i'm not gonna lie jackie hollywood me 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 zooming you right now is the closest that i've gotten to getting laid in the last two months the closest you've gotten to a woman in a long time yeah so sexual intercourse but you know what that's okay this is what i want to do when, when quarantine's over the first thing i want to do is just give one of my friends a big hug and not let go for for five seconds because that's 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 the thing i miss exactly <laughs> I really Maybe want to little, <laughs> yeah uh it could it could wind up like that too but are you, that's are you doing any sort of um dating apps even though you can't meet up are you like just flirting or anything like just to keep your mind off of things or um that's a good question i, I mean like not now you know just just to talk to somebody my, you know, my favorite dating app is Instagram DMs. That's, people don't understand, but Instagram DMs is the most successful dating I app. I my boyfriend, Instagram that, DMs. Instagram DMs, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> um, you just gotta, the way you do it is you gotta respond to a story where they aren't posting a thirst trap. Because if you respond to a story when they're posting a thirst trap, they're gonna be like, this guy's horny and wants some. But if you respond to a story where they like post their dog, then yeah. you talk about the dog and they're like oh my god this guy's cool and then after three texts then you start sexting you, and then you know, you know you get it like you understand i don't have any doubts that you will find mrs right soon just because of that <laughs> right there <laughs> um Who do, you, do you like have you used any of those apps like house party or, or like done birthday parties with friends over uh facetime oh. or those kinds of things yet over zoom you know yeah we had uh my uncle celebrated his like 70 whatever birthday party and we had a big um a big zoom birthday call i don't know about you but like it's social gatherings on zoom i just they're so awkward and they it's, are I, unless it's if it's one-on-one -on -one like this i'm totally fine with it but when there's like eight people you don't know who's talking you make a joke it doesn't hit because nobody can hear you and then you don't feel funny anymore like i hate i get it and then, and then leave. It's so awkward if you want to be the first person to leave the Zoom call. Oh, me. That's always me. <laughs> oh my God. Always um, the first one wants to leave, and you got to be like, you can't make up an excuse like, oh, I got a dinner to go to. Oh, I got a meeting. Like you literally can't. So you have to say like, oh man, I got a, I got a major headache. Like all of a sudden, I feel sick. I gotta go. Because otherwise, I, no, no excuse. <laughs> Crazy. And you know what, Jackie, this is a side note. I just want to tell you how stoked I am that I'm getting interviewed by the same lady who interviewed Nelly. So basically, uh -huh. me and Nelly are interview Eskimo buddies, and that's pretty awesome. That's, that's such a cool way to look at it. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you are my guest on the show because I always have fun talking to you. Yeah. So, I mean, when all of this is over, do you, do you think that you're going to be able to actually go and like live the same type of life you did before? Or are you going to be extra weird, like still like sanitizing constantly or like wearing a face mask like four months from now? Or do you think you'll just go and just start shaking people's hands again? You know, Jackie, the way I say is I'm, I'm going to die when I was supposed to die. And the worst thing that you can do as a human is live in fear. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, this may sound selfish, but I can't, I, I don't know how to, uh, I, I need to be free. So I'm going to do my best to, um, to be as free as possible. That being said, it's selfish to live like that because you're putting other people's lives at risk. But you know what? I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm not one of those clean freaks. I'm just going to, I guess the best way to look at it is I'm going to just try to not be around old people or people with weak immune systems, you know? Um, yeah. But you know, if it's a 0.01% chance that I die of the coronavirus, I would rather risk my life and take that chance than live my whole life 
like with with a mask on in a police state. It's just it's too much. I think I think things will go back to somewhat normal soon. So I agree with you. Like it's it's quite a lot. If you had like an ideal place that you could be quarantined right now anywhere in the world, where would you go? Just like you could teleport yourself anywhere. Man, that's a really good question. It's got to be somewhere like, you know what? It would be Alaska. That's where I would want to go. Because you just see like pictures of Alaska. Alaska is beautiful. I've actually been there twice. And um, if you're a nature person, even I'm not really like a nature lover type of person, but even I find it beautiful. So if you love nature, that's like the best place. That's it. And you know what? Where I'm at right now is Sonoma. I don't know if you've ever been to Sonoma County or the town of... It's, I look around and I never, uh, this is, this is honestly probably in my top five places to quarantine because of the weather's perfect. Some of the most beautiful walks, like you could imagine, um, hikes. It's, uh, I, 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 every single time I come up here, I thank God that I was lucky enough to not be born in like a, a horrible place like San Francisco or something. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. SF's cool. But, um. Um, are you are you and your parents like driving each other crazy at all or do you have any siblings or is it just you yeah so it's I have two siblings they're not here right now but um, my parents the thing is my my dad is uh he's very um he's one of the guys who's taking it very seriously so he just telling me to wash my hands 20 times a day but the thing is he's at he's at high risk he's 69 years old um so he, so it's so I'm driving him crazy because What I love to do, Jackie, I don't know about you, I love to take long drives and I like to listen to the Garden State soundtrack from front to back. And I and I like to just put myself while like looking at nature um, and I'll be gone for two hours on a drive. And um, my dad thinks that I was going out and banging hookers and doing blow off of titties. And and it wasn't what I was doing. Um, And I could see why he thinks that because of the person I am. But so that's been like the that's been the divide and the complication, really. You're but really going out and hanging out by yourself, and he thinks you're like meeting up with friends or partying or whatever. Yes, but I will say this: I, my birthday was a few days ago, and I really I blew it. We threw a social distancing party at like a winery slash park, and um, I put it on social media. I think 15 people ended up coming. We got the cops called on us, so then we ended up taking a hike to the place we used to drink in high school. And we were just drinking pizza, drinking beer, or eating pizza, drinking beer. It was top five nights of my entire life. Like the cops didn't give you any sort of fine tickets? No, white privilege, baby. They don't care. And also, uh, also cops, I feel like cops are being a little bit more lenient because they get it too. They're going through the same shit and they kind of wish that they were able to hang out with their friends. So when they see other people hanging out there, like the cop was super cool. He's like, dude, I hate being that guy but like I have to tell you to leave trust me I think it's ridiculous too you guys gotta get out of here so right well hopefully things go back to normal soon I want to do one last thing with you that has nothing to do with quarantine because obviously the subject is a little depressing I want to do trivia with you and I want you I want you to give me a subject that you think that you are best at and by subject I mean math science entertainment religion animals politics anything really and I'll um you know I would say music if there's, or does music fall into entertainment? Okay, so music is its own category. And uh, we'll do, okay, we'll do a music mixed quiz. So it, it'll be completely random stuff about music. So there's going to be 10 questions and I'm going to give you multiple choice. Okay, and, cool. I can make these questions up if they're weird because I'm just getting them off a, web, a website. But yeah. uh, fun. okay. Let's see, start. Classical rock combinations. Which two artists might have collaborated on the fictional song Bohemian Rhapsody in Blue? Is it Freddie Mercury and George Gershwin, Roger Taylor and Irving Berlin, Brian May and Leonard Bernstein, or John Deacon and John Philip Sousa? You know, I'm stumped, but I've guessed on enough tests to know that C is your, whatever C is, whatever the third one, that's what I'm going for. Leonard Bernstein. That is incorrect. Oh, it was definitely it? Freddie, Freddie Mercury and George Gershwin. The one oh, that's I didn't... obvious. You like thought that was too obvious, right? Yeah, exactly. Dang. So okay. So I learned about the quizzes on this website. If it seems correct and obvious, it probably is that one. There's not really any questions on here. Okay. Thanks for that tip.
Which great American entertainer is known as the godfather of soul? Is it Adam Sandler, Sean Connery, James Brown, or Will Smith? <laughs> James Brown. And that was easy. That was easy. All right. What 1960s band, famous for I'm a Believer, released an unsuccessful movie called Head in 1968? The Beach Boys, The Monkees, The Beatles, or The Rolling Stones? Um, the Monkees. That's correct. What is the missing word from this Tammy Wynette song? Stand by your blank. Is it woman, daughter, man, or son? Stand by your woman, stand by your daughter, stand by your man, stand by your son. Man. That is correct. Oh, I'm killing it. I was some three for four. Yeah. Who's yeah. known as the king of rock and roll? Oh, man. Elvis Presley. Yeah, these are too easy. I'm going to give yeah. you that one just without even reading them. All right. What first name? What first name do rock music lead singers Johnson, Bloom, Burden, and Clapton have in common? Is it James? Eric. Yeah. That, <laughs> man, mm -hmm. I should have like vetted these questions before I. I asked. Know. No, it's cool. We'll just keep going. <laughs> also known as the live music capital of the world, Austin, Texas, renamed its Second Street in 2010 to honor one of its more famous longtime residents. Who is the long-haired country music legend? Elvis Presley, Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, Michael Jackson. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Um, it's not Michael Jackson. Elvis Presley, Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, Michael Jackson. You know, I'm going to say Willie Nelson. That's exactly what I would have said, and that is correct. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Right. That, that, was, that was a hard one. We got two more. Who was, or three more. Who was born in New Jersey in 1949, born to run in 1975, and born in the USA in 1984? Those are like- Oh, that's uh, uh, a Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Good job. You're killing it. Mm -hmm. Musician Sarah McLachlan mostly sticks to the piano and guitar during her performances. However, she first learned to play which instrument? Tuba, flute, ukulele, or accordion? The first instrument she learned. Tuba? Tuba, flute, ukulele, or accordion? I'm going to say accordion. Accordion is incorrect. Ah! The answer was actually ukulele. Wow, that was, my last, that was my last guess. She doesn't strike me as a... Because ukulele people are like chill, and she did a song in the arms that... Or she just doesn't... See, ah, maybe, I don't know. I just, I'm okay. Um, see, everybody associates Sarah McLaughlin with like the dying dogs commercial. Yeah. And that's the la that just doesn't feel like a ukulele to me, so. Yeah. In which of these halls of fame was Willie Nelson first inducted? The Songwriters Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or Famous Texans Hall of Fame? Wow, that is a, that is a tough one. Uh, Writers, Country Music, Rock and Roll, or Famous Texans? Um, I'm going to say Rock and Roll. That was incorrect. It was the country music. Damn it! Oh my God, I'm blowing it. So you got no, you did you did well. I think you only got two wrong, yeah. No, I got I got like three wrong. I think four. My, my phone is frozen. Otherwise, I tell you, but I think you're right. I think that was three wrong. That's pretty good. Seven out of ten. That's a C average. You know, you're still passing the class. So. Yeah, it sounds like my tenure at SF State. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I love trivia. I've been playing. Yeah, same here. Um, okay, well, I mean, I hope like everything goes well. Uh, if there's anything that you're working on or you just released or anything you want to plug or tell people where to find you, now is your, your time to shine. I will leave the floor with you, Imani. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I just released an album. It's called Everything is Fine. And it's, we were talking about Are You the One? The album is in loving memory of one of my cast members who passed away uh, earlier this year, Alexis Eddy. Well, she's, uh, you know one of my yeah she's the best one of my best friends and uh she loved my music and i know that she's listening to it and uh from heaven so just release an album and um i think it's my best work so at least listen to it and even if you hate it let me know that you hate it i'm open to all opinions <laughs> and uh, i will not be offended but it's definitely worth a listen i will say that it's called everything is fine by e-money but just so you know that's not why i came on this i came on this because you're awesome and you're fun to talk to uh, <laughs> but also buy my album or else i'll be really sad <laughs> i can't wait to listen to it actually i i really like your stuff i love your your voice like the tone of your voice so definitely oh, listen to it um 
And if you, you want to give out your uh, your Instagram or whatever else. Yeah, my Instagram is at emoneydoesit. And then my OnlyFans is uh, emoneysellsdickpics, all one <laughs> word. So um, whichever one, most people are, uh, I have more followers on OnlyFans than Instagram. It's weird. I um, just have a really great dick. But uh, no, Instagram at emoneydoesit. Follow me. I'll follow you back. Let's be friends. I have nothing but time to just chat with random. So holler at me. Awesome. I love it. Well, thanks for being on Honey, I'm Home. I had a lot of fun with you. And hopefully when this is all over um, and you're back in LA, I will hopefully see you there sometime soon. Yes, you got to move to LA and we got to take over Hollywood together. Let's do this.